Hello, and welcome to the Mom Training Podcast, where we discuss the skills and strategies to create possibilities in motherhood and make it more fun, efficient, organized, and peaceful. So welcome to part three of four of the self-care series that we're doing. Okay, today we're going to get serious and talk about something crazy. Your biggest self-care weapon. You're like, ooh, Diana, tell me something good. I know it's got to be something good, real good. You got me all pumped up with the self-care thing. Tell me what I want to hear, Diana. Tell me. Hit me hard. Hit me hard, girl. Well, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm going to give it to you good. You ready? Here it is. (laughs) Your biggest self-care weapon is sleep. (laughs) Yeah, you thought it was going to be some like life-changing, earth-shattering tip of advice, didn't you? Well, realistically, sleep is exactly that. It'll make or break everything that you do. I'll tell you what, I used to hate sleep. I mean, I literally was like, why is sleep even invented? Like, this is like the biggest waste of time I have ever done in my entire life. Sleep is so dumb. And you know what? That belief system (laughs) about hating sleep brought me to a nervous breakdown. Like, you know, like my brain fried in 2012. I completely lost it because I was like either working or working on projects for like 20 hours a day. And then I would like be like, oh, gosh, I better go sleep. My body's like screaming like, help. So I'd like sleep for like three or four, maybe five hours a night. Like, and this went on for months and months and months until I completely crashed. I completely crashed. I was like, I have so much I want to do. So many things I want to like accomplish. And like the world is so exciting and just sleep is such a waste of time. Nope. I'll tell you what, that was the biggest refining fire of taking care of myself I could ever have. I mean, I even like... Couldn't I like could not even take care of myself at that point because I fried my brain because of a lack of sleep. So now it's like not even worth it to me at all, especially with being a mom. I have so many people I have to take care of and so many things I have to remember and do. There's no way in heck I can mess up my sleep. (laughs) Be like, Diana, sleep's like not that big a deal. Like, no, it really is. There are so many different things that sleep does for us. So sleep improves concentration and productivity. Okay, and we all need that, you know, to be able to like focus on a task. I can tell the days that I don't get enough sleep. I'm like, okay, what was that? What do I need to do? How do I do it? Um, oh, crap. oh, dang it. What was it that, you know, like it like makes a huge difference with me being able to be like, let's get in there, get it done. Let's knock this out. Or, you know, if it's like, okay, so I just feel like I should just sit here for a while. Productivity and concentration and imp- like sleep is like proven to like scientifically to increase your concentration and productivity. So another thing that sleep does is it improves your immune system, your immune function. And so we all know that we need that too because it really sucks if the family gets sick and then mom gets sick. So I did a podcast a little bit back about family immune system. So if you haven't listened to that, you can go back through there. It kind of talks about the immune system and, you know, also like supplements and stuff that you can do to improve your immune system. But sleep is like a really important thing of your immune system. Like if you ever notice like, you know, you're on vacation or something and you're like getting a lot less sleep and, you know, maybe a little bit higher stress. You're not eating as best nutrition as you normally do. And then for some reason you get sick when you get back. I really believe that if you would have kept your sleep normal, you know, been able to give your body what it needed, the extra stress of being in a different place, like doing a lot more things, being a lot more active, maybe not eating exactly how you want to, you know, your sleep kind of like just balances everything out. So another benefit of sleep is it stabilizes your mood. So poor sleep is linked to depression, affects emotions, and social interactions. I don't know about you, but, like, I hate having bad days. (laughs) And, I mean, they still come, even if I get enough sleep. But, you know, there's a lot less bad days if I actually get enough rest. So if I am up a lot in the night or I don't get enough sleep, say my kid gets up early, there is a lot higher chance of me being upset Or get, like, pushed over the edge for something. If something goes wrong or doesn't go according to plan, like, it's harder for me to process it. Like, it really is. Like, it makes a huge difference. So start to, like, recognize, like, how you feel when you get enough sleep and when you don't. I will say that I had a friend that would work, like, some nights until, like, 3 in the morning. And then other nights she'd only work till 10. And, like, her schedule was just so off. 
It was actually better for her. No, I do not recommend this. It was actually better for her to like have less sleep because her body ran on adrenaline instead of actually feeling what her body was actually experiencing and how horrible she felt because her body was running on adrenaline. So like during that time, she would get a whole night's sleep one night and she would feel horrible the next day. And it's because her body got enough rest that night, but the adrenaline wasn't kicking in. So she was actually feeling what her body was actually feeling and experiencing without the adrenaline. So know if you're not getting enough sleep and then you go to trying to get enough sleep, you might experience a little bit of adjustment period of your body being like, okay, now I'm getting enough sleep. So now I can heal all the places and stop using the adrenals because they do run out. I can tell you right now that your adrenals can burn out. Okay. And that's when you need like extra vitamins, like if vitamin B12 complex is awesome for that. It actually healed my adrenals when I got pregnant because I would take a vitamin B12 supplement every single day. And I was like, gosh, oh man, I'm just feeling so much better. Like, I don't know what it is. And, you know, I found out later in one of my nutrition classes that vitamin B12 actually is like really crucial for healing adrenal fatigue. So just so you know about that. Sleep affects your mood, your, you know, affects your emotions, how you interact with people. If I'm socializing with people and I'm tired, I'm quiet. You're like, you're quiet? (laughs) No, really, I get quiet. Like, I, you know, I just stop talking. You know when I'm tired because it's just like, I'm gone. I'm out. You know, so it's really important to make sure that we get enough sleep. I'll also add in here with like depression and stuff. Like I had some postpartum depression after my second child. And the main thing that got me back on track was getting nine hours of sleep a night. Because I was getting up like one to two times in the night to breastfeed him. But the nine hours of sleep, like at least, like I had to get like sometimes even like 10 hours a night. Like I would have to go to bed literally like 830 and wake up like whenever like kids woke up at like 630, you know, because my body needed time to heal and restore itself and get the chemicals and hormones and everything balanced back out. And sleep is your best place to do that. So when you sleep, it balances all your systems out. You have to think of your body as literally like chemical processes going all through your body, like all the time. So, you know, like that's why when you like eat certain foods, you feel a certain way. When you have caffeine, it like makes you, you know, feel a certain way. When you do this and that, you know, it's all chemical reactions in your body. And in order to balance all those chemicals out, sleep is going to be your best thing. You're like, I've tried everything. I don't know. I don't know. You know, it could be other things. You know, it could be actual imbalances of different things. But I'm just saying sleep is a huge component of having your body be balanced and your chemicals and hormones be balanced. So here's some tips you can try to help make sleep a little bit higher of a priority and have it actually happen more often. (laughs) Just remember this. Tomorrow begins by what time you go to bed. As we talked about in the last podcast about picking a bedtime and then picking what time you're going to wake up. But it really starts with what time you go to bed. Because if you don't go to bed early enough, you're not going to be able to wake up early enough. So pick a time you want to go to bed. Pick a time you want to wake up in the morning and then figure out how many hours of sleep you need and go from there. So my body needs about seven and a half hours of sleep. So I give myself eight hours from when I get in bed to when my alarm goes off. So I make sure that I get my seven and a half hours in. You know, sometimes, you know, it takes a while to fall asleep or, you know, I'm a little restless or something just to make sure, like, you know, that was trial and error to figure out what my body needed for sleep. And mine's seven and a half hours. So you decide what you need, okay? And that's, you know, just start experimenting with things. And just a reminder, if you're highly sleep deprived, remember the story of my friend who ran on her adrenaline every day. So your body will have to get used to it. I personally like to go to bed earlier, like 9 or 9.30, um, and then getting up earlier than the rest of my family to knock out some important, like, self-care tasks, like, you know, journaling, exercise, just the things that I, like, need for myself. And routine changes with time, you know, depending on how old the kids are, what your circumstances are, you know, are you going to take them to a gym? You're going to work out at home. You know, you're going to have to figure out and adjust often to how you're going to be able to get enough sleep, how you're going to be able to take care of yourself. But find a sleep routine and a time that works for you. The next tip is prepare early for things you need to do before bedtime. So it could be like making a lunch for your husband, getting the kitchen cleaned up, getting ready for bed, you know, depending on how long your bedtime routine is. 
you know, you take a bath, a shower, you wash your face, you brush your teeth. So I actually like get ready for bed when I get my kids ready around seven or seven thirty. So like if you come to my house around like seven, like I'm like ready for bed because <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm just going to do this now while I have the time and I'm already trying to get them to brush their teeth and do whatever else. So I'm just going to take care of myself and get ready for bed. So to make sure that I can get to bed earlier. So it's just thinking about like, what can I do so I'm not stuck? You know, it's 15 minutes till I want to be in bed. And I'm like, but I got to do this and that. And I want to pick up the floor. I want to, you know, make sure that my bag is packed for tomorrow. You have to start thinking where you are in your situation. How can you plan in self-care? This is all about planning in self-care. Go back earlier in the day and say, cool, what am I going to need to be able to get in bed earlier. You know, am I going to have the kids clean up before they go to bed instead of like just trying to get them in bed, you know, and then cleaning up after? Can I do the dishes earlier in the day, make that lunch, make sure that my bag is packed early for tomorrow morning? Do I have my gym clothes out? Do I have this prepared? You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, am I planning out my food every day? So am I going to do that, you know, right before bed? And then, you know, it could take a lot longer than I thought. Or am I going to, you know, plan out my food around snack time at three, you know? So it's just really starting to think about what do I need? When do I need to do it? And how can I make this happen? How can I prepare so I can actually get in bed at my bedtime? Now, believe me, kids are so unpredictable. (laughs) I, I have really had to like work on being patient. You know, if like, I'm hungry. I need to go to the bathroom again. Um, you know, I, I want to snuggle. You know, and it's like, but I need to be in bed in 15 minutes. That's why it's important to get those non-important things like the lunch, the bag, the gym clothes, you know, the house cleaned, whatever, done as early as possible because you never know. You never know what's going to come. So, you know, if I'm shooting for a 9 o'clock bedtime, like 9 to 9.30 is like my shooting into. So if I I have something that runs a little bit over, like, but like my for sure, like I want to be in bed by 930, but as close to nine as possible, because I'd rather get up at five. (laughs) But just being flexible, because you've gotten the other things ready. So, you know, in most nights, you might be able to just get right in bed. But sometimes know that there will be resistance, there always will be resistance from trying to do something, just always realize that that is part of it. And that is okay, and that we can get through it. We have the ability to create, if something continues to get in your way, like if, so, if, if someone continues to be hungry every night after you put them to bed, then start having a snack before they go to bed. Start, you know what I mean? Just start to think of how you can solve your own life problem that is resisting your progress, especially with self-care. So really start to think about that. The next tip is make a rule of when you put your phone down in the evening. So mine is 8 p.m. I still have to fight this and work on remembering this because sometimes I'll just sit down and be like, oh, man, I need to just chill a minute. But the thing is, my phone really doesn't fill my chill bucket, okay? Like it really just kind of sucks it more from me. And then I'm like, oh, I really need to go to bed. But now I'm thinking about a bunch of stuff. I watched a a video that's got me thinking about something, you know, so it kind of makes it so I can't fall asleep as quick. Like a lot of waste of time, man. So put the phone down, make a rule of when you're going to put your phone down in the evening. And you're like, but, but Diana, like my alarm's on my phone. Well, you know what time you're going to wake up in the morning, set your alarm, go plug it in, put it away. It'll help you fall asleep quicker, have a more relaxing evening. It may feel uncomfortable for a little bit because I know like getting connected to your phone like is a real thing. Okay. And again, phones are made that way. So put it down, be the boss. No phone, you're not going to take over my life. <laughs> and don't get stuck on your phone when you're brushing your teeth, when you're doing anything like it can really suck you in. I swear to you, setting the phone down is like one of the best things ever. Like it really is. Like I love it. <laughs> It saves me so much time and I actually get to bed on time. Literally any night that I have my phone on me, I never get to bed on time. So if I am serious about getting to bed on time and waking up early in the morning, which sets the tone for my entire day, my phone is down and not touched at all the rest of the night. Someone could text me, someone like, I'm not touching my phone. Okay. All of my text messages are on silent. 
like not even vibrate. So if you want to get a hold of me, like right away, you better call me. Texting, my phone is on silent. <laughs> so I'm not going to be bugged by texting. That's not usually a crucial thing. Like call me if you need me. You know what I mean? So as your biggest self-care weapon, I really want you to focus on your sleep. So if you want to fight the war of making sure that you're taken care of as a mom, you learn how you can create the environment around you to get more sleep and start feeling better. It really is your biggest self-care weapon. Each day, start to plan how you can protect that bedtime. Stand there with your sword like, it's mine! (laughs) So protect that bedtime as much as possible. Stay away from your phone and see how it helps you and if you sleep better at night. I hope you can sleep well this week and feel so much more refreshed. So join us next week for the last episode of the self-care series and let's keep this momentum going. And I really hope that you're gaining momentum and starting to feel a little bit better and starting to feel a little bit more in control with your self-care because that is like one of your key things. So come and follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you guys. Come find me. I'd love to connect with you at Diana Ballard Live. That's at Diana Ballard, L-I-V-E. So hit that subscribe button because I want to make sure that you're here next week as we're working on the self-care thing. So tell other mamas you know about this podcast and we'll see you next week on the Mom Training Podcast.